start off with day two hair. As you can see, I'm a little bit oily up here, which is normal for me. Uh, we're going to take care of that at the end. I'm going to start off by using a heat protectant all over my hair. And I'm going to do this first well before I start curling my hair because I want all the moisture to absorb in already before I start heating my hair. And I'm not spraying anything up here because I don't really heat um, this part of my hair. Next I'm going to be taking a wide tooth comb and combing out my hair so we're not heating up any tangles or anything. That's pretty bad if you're, you know, taking 300, 400 degree heat and just heating those tangles up in your hair. So I'm going to go ahead and heat up my curling wand to the highest heat setting. I don't use hairspray at the end of finishing my hair, so this helps my style set a lot longer without using hairspray. And I just use a Remington one and a half inch curler to a one inch curler that tapers off at the end. I'll insert a link below so you guys can find the exact same one that I use. So when my wand is totally heated up, I'm going to go ahead and start. I usually start off on the, my left side, and I'm going to take this front section right here, and depending on how much time I have during the day, I will take um, larger and smaller sections. But right now I have a moderate amount of time to do my hair. So I'm going to take basically a two inch section. I take pretty big sections because I like my waves to be a little bit bigger and look a little bit more natural. So I'm going to go ahead and take a two inch section. It's about this big, pretty large. I'm going to take the layers that frame my face first. And I'm going to start about um, right here. I don't start at the root and I'm going to start curling at the wider end of the barrel twisting the hair away from my face and just leaving that there until my hair is a little bit warm to the touch and then I'll just let it go. So that's pretty much it. I hold it right here and what I do is I just kind of topple it over actually the other side of my head and I take one of these little clips and just clip it up here so it's out of the way for my next section. So taking the same amount of size it gets done pretty quickly. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and part with my pinky finger and get another big section. I'm going to curl this one away from my face as well. Starting off, as you can see, towards the top part of the barrel, the bigger part of the barrel. Sometimes if you twist your hair towards the middle and then the end of your hair starts going towards the bottom, the smaller section of the barrel, you'll have those tighter curls. But for my hair, I like having the bigger, looser waves. So I leave it here for maybe less than 10 seconds, hold it in my hand for a second, it's a little hot, and then I just let it go. That's it. I don't do anything to it, just toss it back. And then the last section, really only need three sections, if you section pretty big. I'm just going to take that last portion, and I'm going to curl starting from the larger part of the barrel, and curl towards my face this time. I don't like all my waves to stick together if I curl them all away from my face because then they all tend to like join into one big curl. So less than 10 seconds. When I have these back sections I kind of like to rest it on my shoulder. That little um, heat nub, heat protected nub, just put it on my shoulder so my shoulder can hold it, kind of fan it off, it's a little hot. And then it drops whenever it wants to. So you can see, this is the back section, this is the front section, they're not going in the same way. So that way you'll have a little variation in your waves. So that's that. That side is done, really quickly. I'm going to let this front section down. Just kind of finger pick it. And then I'm just going to look, because usually there's no waves from the top of my head to about mid-shaft. So I look at how I like it. If I like it to stay that way, I'll leave it. If not, I'll just go ahead and just spot spot check. So I want to add a little bit of movement right here so I'm just going to take my curling wand and using the smaller part, the top end, I'm just going to put a little bit of movement, a little bit of a dent right here at the top so I'm not curling the bottom part of my hair. So I'll leave that there for a little bit and then like the same thing. I want to make sure that that definition is actually there so I'm going to let my hair cool off in my hand before I let it go. Well, a lot of people don't realize is when you're heating up your hair with such hot tools, basically what you're doing is you're opening the cuticle and making your hair stay that way. Now, when you're done curling and your hair is still hot, your hair is still malleable and moldable to heat. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that your hair is cool because then the cuticle seals up and then that's how your 
style stays in place. So leaving your hair this way to cool off will make sure that the curl or whatever you're doing to it, crimping, um, straightening your hair is going to stay the way that you heated it up to be. So make sure it cools off the way you want it to stay. So my hair is still a little bit warm. If I let it totally um, cool off in this way, it's going to be like ringlets. So I'm going to let it um, fall down and when it's a little bit warmer than when it was because it was hot when I stopped. So here. You can see I have that definition right here in the middle where I wanted it to. But it's still hot. It's still malleable. It's still moldable. So I'm just going to go ahead and tug on it a little bit. And if I stay here and I let it totally cool off, you'll see that this part of my hair gets flatter. See? Now I'm going to leave it this way because I tend to curl, I tend to um, use the barrel on my hair and then I'll leave my hair that way for one to two days. So I know by the end of the first day, second day, my hair is going to fall a little bit flatter. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave it that way. I like the amount of movement there is right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side, left and right. So I'm going to go ahead and start off on this right side. I'm going to take the same framing section. Now as you can see my hair is parted in a side part, so this side of my hair is going to have more hair. It's going to take a little bit longer time to do it. So I'm going to take this front section just right here, this front section right here. So I do have some pieces down here that still frame my face. I can't get them all and get a good nice wave, so I'm just going to finger comb through this front section and then I'm just going to go ahead and take my wand and curl these framing layers away from the face. And then just roll it up. Now when you curl and you curl towards your face, that's when you get those nice like 50s, those retro kind of waves. These are the kind of waves that I like to have that are more relaxed. I'm going to take the second section of the hair that's framing my face, which is going to be right here. Kind of like towards where your ear is. Now when I'm sectioning, don't really do it too precisely, just as long as you don't take hair that's like this. Okay, so this is a no-no whenever you're sectioning your hair. You see how I'm pulling over here? You can see the base of my hair is, there's some hair that's down here by my ear, there's some that's by the top of my head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to part that in the middle, because then that's when you get like uneven and you don't get the same kind of product that you want. I'm going to go ahead and take this top section, nothing too precise, just make sure your hair, the hair, base of your hair isn't getting pulled from, you know, this part of your hair and this part of your head, so kind of in the same area. So I'm just going to finger comb it again, take my wand, it's still framing layer, so I'm going to do it away from my face, starting at the top, fatter end of the barrel. And then just kind of letting that fall. If you can't catch it, it's no big deal, okay? This is, these are just easy, relaxed waves. What you can always do is you can always just kind of bunch it up. And when I do this with the framing layers, I like to hold them up, get them kind of cool. I do this little dingling, and I flip it over, and I pin it over. Just so I can get to the other side of my hair. And I'm going to do this last framing section right here. As you can see, it's not a pretty defined section. You don't have to be very precise with this. So, framing layer. So away from the face. Be careful with your ear. This is a smaller section, so I'm going to hold it much, much less time. I'm going to let this just cool off a tad in my hand. And if I can get it to stay, I'll pull it over like so. And just secure it. Now we got the back sections. This, I can already tell, is only going to need two sections. So I'm going to Partition those evenly. This one is not a framing layer of my face anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and curl this one towards me, starting with the fatter end of the barrel. And if you can't get it all the way up, just pull your hair up and it'll go up towards the top end of the barrel. Leave it there for a second and drop it, and then I toss it. Then I got the last section, and just so those two don't clump together, I'm going to do this one away from my face. There's no real science to it. I just don't like the framing layers to go towards my face. And then I just drop it. So you can see, if I hold it a little bit longer, the curl is more defined. So then, I'll let this hair down. 
And usually I don't do any touch-ups on this side. So then I just kind of run my fingers through my hair, separate the curls, and you can see that this part has just relaxed a lot more. Now we're almost done. I like the way my hair looks, but I don't like the way my roots look. They're limp, they're oily, they're just... It's day two hair. What do you expect? So I'm going to go ahead and take some dry shampoo. I'm using the Aveeno Pure Renewal Dry Shampoo, which is sulfate free. This is one I'm trying out right now, but I really, really like it so far. I'm going to go ahead and shake up the bottle. And just starting off in sections, I only section with my fingers, no big deal. So take the can about can length away from your head and just spray. Now, as you can see, you can't really see any product so the more you wait the more the product is going to dry up and you'll see it turn white so this comes out as like a liquid and then the longer you wait it'll absorb the oils and turn more white and opaque so you can see already more of like that whiteness towards the top of my hair so i'm going to go ahead and just section off parts of my hair and apply the product So when you start noticing like the white particles start to come up, like the little powder is more visible, I'm going to go ahead and just take my fingers, and this is what a lot of people don't know how to do with dry shampoo is to let it wait. Um, you need time for the dry shampoo to absorb those oils. So what you do is you basically just take your fingers and take where you sprayed it and just rub it in to your hair. And you have to kind of work that powder into your scalp to get the maximum benefit of the dry shampoo. And then of course, if you find parts that are still oily, you can go ahead and spray some more. Just give it time to dry. You can already see that I've built a lot of volume, taking all that oil out of my hair. But another cool thing that you can do with dry shampoo is if you notice that some part of your hair is a little bit more limp, a little lifeless, what you can do is you can take that dry shampoo and place it in that area you want to create more volume and it'll suck up all the oils and give you more texture so your hair can build more on top of each other. So I like the amount of volume I have so far but I notice I'm a little bit oily right here in the front part of my hair and I want more volume about right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray a little bit more of dry shampoo, let it dry and then we'll let it absorb a little bit more. So now that my dry shampoo is dried, I'm just going to do the same thing and run my fingers through my hair and work it into my scalp. And this is very important for you darker haired ladies because a lot of dry shampoos tend to dry white. So it's very important that you kind of blend that powder into your hair so you don't look like Cruella de Vil. Now, this looks like a lot of work, but trust me, if you do it the right way, it makes a bigger difference. And voila, that is it. It really only takes me about 10 minutes to do my hair in the morning. Of course, it's going to be a little bit longer because I'm talking you through it, but this is the finished product. So that's all it takes to recreate this same hair. I thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys like the video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe or leave a comment down below. I'm Femron on YouTube, Instagram, and Tumblr if you guys need to find me. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.